So my name is Ravi. Welcome everybody. And uh, this is uh, the second course that we're doing, second time, second day. Um, we started last time about talking about Ganesh, you know, Ganapati. Uh, and our main goal, what I wanted to bring out to everybody is that, uh, first of all, does everybody understand English or Gujarati, Hindi? English, good. English is fine? Okay. So uh, my purpose was, you know, we have a lot of knowledge, a lot of wealth, a lot of culture, background, history that goes thousands of years back. Um, when we come to this country, a lot of times either we forget it or we have questions and we don't have answers or we don't have the right input from those that we're asking. So either we don't have a proper understanding, so we lose interest, okay? And what happens in my own generation as I was growing up, um, I was with my friends, you know, uh, kids, our parents are doing Qatar at home and we're trying to run away because what? Well, I'm going to sit in a, in a room full of smoke and we say, oh, smoking is bad, smoking is bad. And, you know, it's like it doesn't make sense. There's fire in the home. There's a oven going on. Uh, I'm tearing in my eye. I don't have a good experience and I don't understand why we do it. So what do we do? Hey, I got homework to do. I'm going to go to my friend's house. We have a project to do, right? We make up something and we get out. So what happens? The parents, Qatar's going on. Who's there? Just adults, okay? The senior citizens are there doing katas. Where is everybody else? They're out somewhere talking, partying, whatever. So where's the wealth of our knowledge? Where's the wisdom going? You know, we go culture to culture. We go generation to generation. Either we're going to lose it because we don't have the interest. Nobody gave us the answers we seek, and so we lose it that way. And then either we look at Christianity and all these other religions, and there's proper channels of input coming from those areas, where you can go online, you can do this, you can do that, you can go to church. And there's avenues, there's, there's detail coming through, explanations coming through. When you have questions, there's answers they're providing. They seem to start making sense to you. And you're in the environment where you see it all the time. So a lot of kids growing up, you know what? I like this, I understand this, I don't understand this. Nobody gives me right answers, I don't get it. Okay? So it loses out. So my goal, my purpose, one of them is to reintroduce that, to say, you know what? We grew up with this, well, what is it? What does it mean? Is there any value to this? Does it make sense in my life? Can I apply it in my life? If I can apply what I learn in my life, oh, now there's meaning to it, there's value to it, because there's something I did that I got a good result out of. So if there's happening, now there's value and there's meaning, and it makes sense to me, oh, I'm gonna do it automatically. You don't have to force me to do it, because I know what it means, so I'm gonna do it automatically. So last time, I'm going to kind of recap and we'll continue from there. What we talked about was Ganpati. So Ganpati, we, you know, most of the prayers we do, most of any event we do, was the first thing we do, we pray to Ganesh. Okay? So we pray to Ganesh, why? Because Ganesh, oh, okay, we're supposed to pray to Ganesh first. How about, do you have any ideas to why we do that or what do you think it means? Uh, go ahead. To this brings an open form, it's yeah. not like I'm going to lecture and yeah, sit yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, so anybody so, you can kind of give your input on yeah, to... So the, basically what we say, like Ganesh is a symbol of virtues. Okay. So Ganesh is a symbol of the virtues which uh, uh, removes your obstacles. Okay. So removes your bad thoughts of process while you start any process. So if you have any process to start with and if you have a negative force beforehand and if you don't remove that, you're not gonna go much further. Okay. So, in symbolism of Ganesh, we starting to pray them and to uh, realize, kind of realizing, kind of training our mind that negative thoughts would go out. Okay, so very good point. Anything else you'd like to add? Anybody? How about you guys? Um, I'm not sure because of what I watched the about a God movie before. Okay. Uh, yeah. was the one who told, you know, announced that any ceremony or prayer, in order to be complete, you should start with uh, praying for a uh, niche. Okay. That's what it is. That's true. Um, okay. How about you? What, like, why do we start with Ganesh? What do we do? Or anything about Ganesh. Like, what is Ganesh? What does it mean? Like, what he mentioned for the uh, obstacles. Okay. Obstacles? To remove obstacles. Mm. Okay. Vigna Harta. Vigna Harta, right? Obstacle. Remove obstacles. Vigna is obstacles. Harta. So he removes our obstacles. Okay. So, good. Alright. So now, 
that is sounds kind of magical. Oh, I pray to God, and God removes my obstacles. Okay, so I continue as I am, but I expect everything around me to change. Okay, do you think that's logical? Do you think that makes sense? Nope. If I continue the way I'm doing something, and I'm expecting a different result, okay, that I want all my problems to disappear, I want all my wishes to come true. Okay, so let's think about that. It, it doesn't make sense, right? It's not logical. So what's not logical about that? Um, there's a quote by, I think it was Einstein. He said, um, doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting a different result is called insanity, right? So insanity, it means you're insane. It, it's, you can't happen. So what is it that needs to change, okay? If I'm trying to be the best basketball player, okay, I can do the same act over and over again and expect, you know what, I'm going to get better, okay? But what's getting better? If I keep doing the same mistake over and over again, am I going to get better? No. So that means there's some change that has to happen, and it's not outside, it's in me. Okay, that change has to happen in me. So if I'm trying to throw the ball into the basket, and I see, okay, it didn't work, I need to notice that. So number one, I need to see that, okay, there's something wrong. So once I, anal once I understand something is wrong, something, something is different than what I want, number two is, okay, what can I do to make that change? That that has to come from inside me. People can force me to do something. I might do it. Okay, fine, you want me to throw the ball? I'm just going to keep throwing the ball. I'm not even looking at the basket. I'm just going to keep throwing. That won't help either, right? I won't become the master basketball player like Michael Jordan. So the change that has to happen is in me, in myself, or in yourself. Right? So that's the number one thing, and we tend to forget that sometimes, that, you know what, I'm going to pray to God and hope all my dreams come true, and if it doesn't, well, guess what? God is wrong. God doesn't exist. Okay? So again, we put it out there. So where is me in this whole concept? Where am I in this concept? So in this prayer concept, it's me, and there's outside. It's me, and then there's God. And if something doesn't happen the way I want, then what's happening? I say, there's something wrong out there. So I, I don't look at myself. So that's number one. We need to first think, you know what? So if something I'm doing and I'm not getting the result I want, maybe it's not that thing. The net has not moved. The basketball, is, but the ball itself is the same size. It's not like I'm throwing the, the ball and the ball suddenly becomes larger when I reach the basket and it doesn't go in. All the other things are the same. So what's changing? I need to realize, you know what, maybe I threw the ball, I need to change the angle. Maybe it didn't go far enough, I need to throw with more force. More force, I'm doing it as hard as I can, it's still not going. Maybe I need to get myself stronger, I need to exercise. And so once you start internalizing, once you start looking at yourself and saying, you know what, there's something in me that needs to change. It's not the outside, it's me, myself, that something needs to be different. Then the magic starts. Then the prayer becomes real. Because the prayer is not for God. So if we think about God, we say God is what? What do you say? What would you say God? God is anything. <laughs> Fill in the blank. Just a visualization of some power. Okay. As far as like we say God, God is perfect, right? All-knowing, mm, yeah. everywhere. Only right. So we have all these definitions. And we can continue. Now because God is so much, there's no limit to what we can say to describe God. Right? So if God is all of that, then does God need anything? No. So who needs? I do. So what is it that I need? So if I need something, that means that I'm lacking something. I feel a lack. I feel something missing in what I have, and I want more, or I want better. So, that, so now, number one, I realize, you know what? Change needs to happen. And then I realized, change needs to happen in me. Then what did I realize? Okay. I need to do something to make that change happen. And so I know I'm here and I need to be there. Well, I need to take those steps to get there, right? Who's going to do that? I can expect somebody else to pick me up and bring me there. But there's an example somebody gave that, okay, you know what? Let's say today, um, you might think, you know, I can be the president. Let's say today, you're given 50,000 people to manage. Were you, would you be able to do it today in the state you are currently? Would you be able to be the CEO of 50,000 people with a billion dollar company? Do you have the knowledge, the expertise, the education, or anything in that sense that would say, you know what, yep, I can do it right now. Okay? 
let many of us, if we're not in that state, we will not be able to do that. We will not be successful in that, right? So it's a matter of bringing ourselves to that state. And for that to happen, it's a process, right? So the more I practice something, the better I get. And so we talk about Ganesh, Ganpati. So we pray to Ganesh. The story we know, like you said, you know, we know the story or we know what Siv said. So why did Siv say that? So what is Ganesh? Ganesh is a symbol. And a symbol of what? As a leader, right? So Ganesh is a symbol of a leader to say what is an ideal leader um, like? What should an ideal leader be like? Right? So we talked about last time, and I'm just recapping a little bit. They say, so Ganesh, we talk about, oh, he has a human body, but he has an elephant head. Right? So we know the story. The story says, uh, Shankar Bhagwan chopped off the head of Ganesh. Right? Um, now, if you think of that, at that moment in the story, it says, Shankar Bhagwan didn't know that's his son. Right? That's what the story says. Now, if you think about it, okay, the story, great for kids. But now if I say, you know what? You're saying Shankar Bhagavan. That's God. The all-knowing, almighty, omnipresent, omnipotent, right? So if he's all-knowing, he's everywhere, all the time, then that means he knew that's his son. Otherwise, he's not God. He's just one of us, right? I might not know that's my son if I never saw him before, and maybe I was out of town. Oh, I didn't know that's my son. When did that happen? But if you're God, well, wait a minute. If that's Shankar Bhagavan, he knew that's his son. And still he chopped his head off. Now the story changes. Now the meaning changes. Okay? So the story is great to get us starting. But now we need to kind of understand and analyze to say, you know what? If he still did that and he's God, why did he do that? So why did he cut the head off? Right? Now if Ganesh was told, you know what? I want you to do this. And he did it. But he never asked why. He never asked questions. Okay? Now there's a law of nature that says if you use it, you keep it. If you don't use it, you lose it, right? You don't do something, you're going to lose it, okay? Nature continues to change. And if you're not changing with, as time goes on, then things tend to get lost, right? Now, he wasn't using his mind. Shankar Bhagavan said, you're not using it. Why do you need it? Let's get it out, okay? We need to put an end to that. So mind, we have a great respect for mind, for mental, for intellect. Garbhati represents intellect. Right? So why, what is intellect? Why do we need that? Okay? What separates us from anybody else? Okay? You look at animals, you look at trees, you look at a piece of rock, a stone, a mountain. Okay? They're not moving. There, there's no feeling or emotion as far as we understand. Right? Animals have feelings and emotions. They have a little bit of intellect. They can communicate. Okay? But beyond that, humans have something that the rest of the world does not. Okay? And that's our intellect. We pride ourselves in having this intellect, but we don't use it. So then what's the point? Chop it off. Get rid of it. You don't use it, lose it. You don't need it. Right? But we do need it. That's what makes us who we are. Okay? So, any questions on that or does that make sense? Okay. So, as a leader, one of the main things we need is to have an intellect. We need to have an understanding. We need to be able to observe, analyze, understand what's around us, right? So as a leader, one of the things is uh, he has big ears, right? So as an elephant, big ears, a few things it's doing, not only is it listening, but any bugs that come around, what does the elephant ears do? They flap, get the bugs out of the way, right? Same thing, when we're listening, as a leader, a leader should listen to everybody, but keep the garbage away. You need to know what's garbage and what's not. And for that, what do you need? An intellect. Okay? Other than that, he has a big stomach. The big stomach, what is the stomach for? purpose of his stomach is to store. So all the information you gather, you want to store it. You want to keep it. Okay? Because you never know when you're going to need that information. Okay? If you're the leader and you happen to know the history, now history repeats itself, right? So next time that same thing happens again or a situation that happened 10 years ago happens again, if you knew that history, you stored it, you can use that understanding and say, you know what, this happened before, here's the mistakes we made, we're not going to do the same mistake again, I'm going to change our approach and we're going to do it better this time, right? So that's, we need to store, we need to store that information. But also along with the stomach, what do we have? We're digesting that information, right? We're absorbing the nutrients out of it, and what do we do to the rest? 
get rid of it. So as a leader, not only do you need to store information, but out of that information, you need to know as an intellect, what do we do in the office, right? We have a lot of paperwork. What happens? We file it. We organize it. We store it properly, and it's organized. So if I need to find it, it's easy to find. Whether you're in a paper office and you have all these drawers, or you're in a computer office where everything is in folders and things like that, right? But we organize things. So our intellect, we need to not only store information, but organize it so it's easy to retrieve. And so memory. Elephants, okay? Elephants at that time were known to have a great memory. Okay, they were considered to be intellectual. Okay, they were the most intelligent animal at the time, as far as science was concerned, as far as what they knew. Now today we also say dolphins are very intelligent creatures, right? Dolphins, uh, there's a lot of science behind it. They have a communication system that we don't fully understand yet. And we understand, oh, you know what? Dolphins are also great creatures. They're, they have some kind of intellect above what we would have understood to be, right? So elephant head was put on to a human body because elephant represented intelligence. So out of all the animals, elephant was the smart one. Well, what should we be? The smart one, okay? So what was the focus on it? You got a human body with an elephant head. The focus is what? The elephant head. What, is, what should that mean? That should remind me. So when I pray to Ganesh every morning, or if I pray to Ganesh before starting anything new or different or anything like that, first thing we do, pray to Ganesh. Why? Looking at Ganesh should remind me, you know what? I need to use my intelligence. Okay? So when I walk out of this room, when I walk out of my home, I should take my intelligence with me. Don't lose it. Okay, it'll get chopped off. <laughs> what happens? Uh, there's a saying, I, I might not say it properly, but there was a, there was a story where um, there was somebody that had money, and then there was somebody that had a know-how. Okay? He knew how to do things, but he didn't have money. And there was a guy who had money, but he didn't know how to do anything. Okay? So what do you think is going to happen? The guy with the know-how will get the money. The guy with the money will get nothing. Okay? Why? Because he had money, but he had no, no clue, no intelligence. Guy with the intelligence didn't have money, but he's intelligent. He knows how to get things. He got his money. All right? So intelligence is a very key factor, whether you're in business, whether you're in school, in industry, anywhere you go. What's the focus? Okay? We focus on the top students, the top companies, the top clients. Right? Why? There's something of value there. What's the value? It's the intellect. Okay? So we look at computers now, we look at all these different things, we look at so many things happening. We have intellectual rights now. Why? Because that's the key. Okay? So as a leader, we want to become knowledgeable, we want to learn, we want to educate ourselves. And part of that education is not just I went to this college, I went to this university, or I know my ABCs, but part of it is internal observation of yourself. To learn of your own self. Who are you? What is the purpose of your life? Why are you here? These are great questions that's been questioned for ages. Okay? And we don't all understand the answers, but that's the process, that's the step. And so Ganesh is symbolizing this initiation, this beginning. And so right from childhood, we start with the prayer of Ganesh to say, you know what? Intellect. I need to keep that in mind. Right? As a leader, so it's not just leaders of countries, it's not just leaders, CEOs of companies, but leaders of our communities, of our hometowns, of our own home, of myself, right? So we are leaders of our own self. The choice I make today is going to decide my future. So I'm a leader of my own future, right? So I need to keep that in mind, that as a leader, if I don't make my own choices, if I don't look at my own self, see where I want to go, where's my goal, okay? Then how can I lead myself? How can I get where I want to be? All right? You look at CEOs of companies, they have a to-do plan, they have a list, they have things right from the beginning, they already have a list of things that they know they need to accomplish. There's a goal. I need to get it done within this time period. But when it comes to our life, where, what happens to that? At our job, we may be the best. When it comes to our life, where does that go? Out the door. It was in the company, it was at the job, I'm at home, no goal, nothing happening. Okay. I eat, I sleep, I'm with family, I'm with kids, I'm with my wife, I'm with my husband. That's it. Watch a movie, have fun. Next day, go right back to work. Routine starts again. At work, I'm the best. Comes home, gone. So where's my life? Where's my goal? I had a goal to get a career. I got it. 
I had a goal to be the best at work. I got it. When it comes to my own life, where is it? It's not for me to add a question or answer. It's for you to answer for yourself. Right? So Ganesh is a symbol of a leader. The eyes. Elephants can see far. Okay? So as a leader, you need to be able to see far ahead of you. Okay? You need to be able to see, okay, I know what's happening here around me, but I also need to know what's happening out there. How's the weather like outside? What's the environment around this? Okay? Not only that, but I know about today. I need to know what's happening tomorrow. I need to plan for the future. I know what I went through. I know my past, but I need to learn from that so I don't repeat that same mistake and I improve on my benefits. Right? So as a leader, I need to have good eyesight, good ears, listen, store, but then also digest. Right? I need to use my intellect, sort out, analyze, understand, and now apply. Okay? So the other thing is action. Now when an elephant takes a step, what do you think happens? Compared to a mouse taking a step, compared to a fly taking a step, what kind of effect do you think that has? One step an elephant takes, what happens? Boom. Okay? It's thunder. There's a lot of weight. There's a lot of value in each step taken by an elephant. Why is that? How can we do that in our own life? Every step I take, every choice I make, it should be like thunder. What do you think? Any ideas on that? You need to train yourself for that. Okay. How else? So let's talk about, you know, as a leader or as a person, how do you think your choices will become more valuable, will have more weight, more value in your own life, in your own situation, in your own work or anywhere you go? Um, if you're making a decision at work, okay, do people respect that decision? Are you a leader in your work or are you the follower at your work where somebody makes a decision and you just follow along, okay? Where's the difference? The one that's making the choices, the decisions, that have experience in the background that gives them that value, that weight at work, at the company level to say, we need to listen to this person. They know what they're talking about. They've been there. They've done that, okay? So experience. What does experience bring? It's bring value. Why? Because if I've gone through something, now I have something to communicate to somebody else that's going through it now. Okay? We talked about earlier about grandparents. So grandparents are a great source. They have a lot of experience. They've gone through their lifetime. Okay? Many of the same things we're going through now, they've been there. They've done that. But what happens to the value of a grandparent? Oh, they're old now. They're weak. Okay, I need to take care of them. And so I'm the leader. And so our pride blinds us from getting the value that we have right next to us, right within our own homes. Any thoughts on that? How do you think we can make use of that wealth? Need to listen, communicate, and then analyze their thought with your thoughts and try to come up with some better execution plan. Right. So you said we have to listen. In order for listening to happen means you have to value the person you're listening to. Okay. If right now you don't value me here, why would you come and spend your precious time listening, understanding, and being part of this conversation? So your own parents. Okay. If the value is not there because now you think, oh, they're older, they're weaker, they're sick, I have to take care of them, I'm so busy, I've got so many things to do, where am I going to put time for that? Okay. Maybe I'll put them in a nursing home. Or maybe, okay, I'll make sure they get to the doctor on time. I'll make sure they get their food on time. Beyond that, where is the value? Where did it go? Okay. My own pride blinds me from seeing that value. So as a leader, pride is very important. Right? You're so proud of yourself, of your leadership qualities, and you want others to respect you, that, that blinds you sometimes. So a good leader is proud, but not blind. OK? 
Okay? They're ambitious, but at the same time, they have respect for the other. Okay? They're a leader of what? Of people. And so, if you don't respect the people you're leading, how can the people respect you? If I don't respect myself to lead my own life, how am I going to listen to my own self, to my own thoughts, to my own understanding? So it's not about others. It's not about out there. This change has to happen inside myself. And that's the true value of what Ganesh teaches. So as a good leader, right? You have good listening skills. You're storing that information. You have good eyesight. You're, you're looking into the future. You're looking at your past. You have your intellect. So all these things are qualities that a leader should have along with ambition, pride, but not an ego that blinds you from seeing others' true value. So we looked at the Gita. The Gita talks of the same things. Okay? What are vices compared to things that are actually going to uplift us to reach our true goals? Okay? So ego is one of them. Once that ego and pride take over my understanding, my viewpoints, okay? it's like having a pair of glasses. When we wear goggles, okay, for sunglasses, it's blacking things out. What if I colored those glasses yellow or orange? Everything I see is yellow or orange, has that tint. Okay, if it's red, everything I look at around me is going to have that tint of that redness, right? So ego is a tint in my eye that's going to blanket what I'm looking at based on my own, tint, my, on my own observation of what I'm looking at. Okay? So we need to remove all of those glasses. We need to remove all those colors and blindfolds that we put on ourselves. And so what is that? Again, we're looking at ourselves. Okay? It's an introspective. So we can blame everybody else we want, but ultimately it comes down to looking at myself and saying, you know what, after everything is said and done, end of the day, where am I? Did I change? Okay? Once I change the way I think, everything around me changes. Not because you changed, but because I changed. Now I can see you as you are. Okay? We have a body that's limited. Okay? We look at our eyes, we see the rainbow, right? It's a visible light spectrum. So in science, um, if you look at the light spectrum, there's the visible light spectrum. It's a tiny speck. Okay? There's infrared, we don't see that. There's ultraviolet, we don't see that. You look at bats. Bats have a different eyesight. They look in the, in the dark. Okay? Their eyes are looking at something very different than what we look at. So their world is a very different world than our own. We live in the same world. Okay? You would think, oh look, I see that tree, the bat sees the same tree. Nope. The world the bat sees is totally different. It has nothing to do with the way we see the world. But it's the same world. So what happened? What's real? So, you know, we say Jagat Mithya, right? Maya. That it's an illusion. It really is. Not because the world is an illusion, but because what I see is an illusion. Because what I see is limited. Right? I don't see infrared. I don't see all these other things. There are sounds that dogs will hear that I have no clue. I never hear it. Because their hearing is much stronger than our own. Dogs can know when, they're, when someone is coming a mile away. And they'll be at the door barking because they know their, their person is on their way home. And they've done studies on this, right? So animals have a keen sense of their senses, their smell, much more powerful than ours, their hearing, much better than ours, okay? Some of them can see much better than we can, right? So what does that tell me? That tells me, you know what? The world I see is not necessarily the true reality that others see. Does that mean when they say, you know what? I see this to be red. I don't see that red. I see it to be brown. That's a perspective based on where I am now. That's my current state. That doesn't mean it's true or it's false. But we need to realize that, you know what? If I have a coin and I put a coin in front of me, or I can put this book in front of me, and when I say, what do you see? You are going to say what? You're going to describe, okay, there's a, there's a picture here. There's some words, okay? It may not mean anything to you, but you know there's some letters there. But I don't see any of that. Okay? What do I see? I see a blank brown square, rectangle. So when you say to me, oh, I see all of these things, 
And I'm looking at it. I'm looking at the same thing you're looking at. And I say, you guys are all crazy. You're all wrong. Okay? There's no way. You're making things up. You're seeing things. Why? Because? What do I see? I see that. Okay? Perspective. Same reality, different perspective. You're in a different place. Now, you're in the corner. So what you see is not what she sees. Right? What you see is that. So what you're seeing is totally different than what I see. Or what she sees. Three people looking at the same object, three different perspectives. Each person says, I'm 100% true and correct. And they are. And that's where war starts, right? We argue with each other. We all say, no, if I'm right, if I'm 100% right, that means you must be wrong. And so we fight and argue, and the wise person will laugh at that. They'll stay silent, they'll smile, and when it's getting too difficult, right? What does Vishnu Bhagavan say? Yada yada idhar masya. Can you tell me what that is? Yada yada idhar masya knanir bhauti bharat abhidhanam adharmasya tadatmanam srijamyam. Abhidhanam adharmasya tadatmanam srijamyam. Right? So, what is the English translation? What is he saying? So, whenever this adharm or in knowledge, like darkness happens, I right. will come and I will take the darkness away right. and take the people out of darkness. Okay, so now with this example, what do you think? Is that practical? Yeah. That's the Vishnu Bhagavan laughing, saying, you know what? There's enough silliness going around. You're hurting each other. Too much damage. I need to step in now. Okay, and awaken all of you to say, you know what? All of you, by the way, here's, the, here's what he was looking at. Do you see it? Oh, yeah, he is right, all right? Here's what you're looking at, do you see it? Yeah, I see it. Well, here's what I was looking at, do you see it? Yeah, I see it. Oh, okay. So we're all looking at the same thing. What are we fighting about? Instantly, war is done. Why? You just got a realization in, in, in a split second that you had ages you didn't understand because you were limited to one vision, one sight, one mindset. So realization doesn't take long. It's a snap once you get to that point. And so when we're not there, what should we do? Should we argue and argue with each other? You're right, I'm right? No, because we're not in full complete knowledge. So how do we know what we're seeing is truly correct? And it's just one, one portion of that. Okay? That side was just one side of a full reality. But that's all I knew. Right? Like the, the toad in the well. Toad thinks that well is the world. That all reality is what's in that well. Until a toad jumped into the well from the outside world and said, oh my God, I'm stuck. And so you have two perspectives. The toad says what? The toad who thought this was the world, what do you mean you're stuck? Look at this well. It's so grand. It's so beautiful. There's nothing but this. This is amazing. And the toad from the outside jumping in says, are you kidding? You're stuck in this little tiny well and you think this is the world? You're missing out on this whole amazing world that's out there. You don't even know. Vishnu Bhagavan is teaching us that. Okay? Get beyond your limits. Get beyond your limitations. Let me help you come out of it. But who can do that? We have to do that for ourselves. We need to take that step. Okay? You take one step, he'll take two steps towards you. Okay, you look at anything. As a parent, you teach your kids. When you teach, have a question, that's when you can answer it. And that's when it's a value to them because you answered when they had a question. Okay? So our goal is be a leader. Be a leader in your own life. Make your own decisions, but be open to knowledge. Be open to wisdom. It's all around you. We just don't see it. So open your eyes or look at somebody else's eyes. Get different perspectives. Get an understanding. Once you start doing that, oh, you know what? There's so much I'm missing out on. It's all around me. I don't even know. I didn't know it was right in front of me. So uh, my goal for this conversation is to say, let's all be leaders in our own decisions, in our own lives, so that we can lead our lives to the best. And if we can do that, 
the world will be a better place. Because we are all going to improve our, ourselves. And so when we're improving myself, I'm not focusing on you and pointing fingers at you. Hey, you're wrong. I'm focusing on me and saying, hey, I'm wrong. And if I'm wrong, how do I correct myself? And that's a wise decision versus an ambitious, egotistic decision that blinds me from true reality. Now the learning starts. And so when we pray to Ganesh, uh, we can now have a different understanding of what we're doing and what it means. And it's a symbol. Okay? You can use any symbol you like. You can make this chair into a symbol. You can say this red ball is a symbol. Okay? If it has value to you, if it has meaning to you, if it reminds you of something, then that's value. To you, it's a value. And that's what matters. Okay? So once you have value to that, focus on it. Once you're focused on it, you'll have something you can do. All right? Um, anything you want, guys want to add to that? So, <clears throat> what's your view on, uh, like, making that process that you have to do certain chantings or certain things? It has, it has to have some logical definitions behind it. Uh, what you say is virtue reminding all these things, but that is one part of it yep, that you have to do, but there is something other logical behind saying particular words. You're 100% correct. So what he's asking is, um, what do I think of chanting or different things, you know, so having a vision, trying to remember that, you know, I have a symbol and I want to have goals, I want to aspire towards them. Those are all great things, but uh, what about chanting? And there's other factors. Okay, so let's actually do something together now, and let's see how that comes out. Okay, so um, we're just going to keep our mouth open, and we're going to say, "Ah, uh -huh. right." Let's close our eyes, and we're just going to say, "Just have a voice come out." Doesn't have to be anything. Okay, let's close our eyes and let's do that. Ah. Uh started with ah. Okay, all we did was, all we did was had our mouth open, we just let the sound come out. Okay, but that sound started below our navel. There was a vibration that happened throughout our entire body to come out. When you're about to close your mouth, before the mouth closes, makes a round shape. So you're doing ah, and then you close your mouth, mm, what's that? Oh. So we say Om. In all, almost all prayers we do, we start with Om. Okay, so let's do Om. Let's see what, what comes out from that. Om. Okay. A few things that happened there. When you started to say that, right before you took a breath. Okay? A lot of times we forget to breathe. So our breathing is shallow. Okay? So take a deep breath in. And now let's start. Okay? Now another thing. A lot of times we're so sedentary, we forget to move. And movement is the key, okay? Action. Knowledge without action is nothing, okay? You can have all the knowledge in the world, but if you don't do anything with it, what's the point for it? What's the meaning behind it? It has no value because you didn't put any action behind it, okay? So um, what I want you guys to do is just raise your hands, both hands above your head. You're going to see, okay, you're yawning, which is great. It's actually your body's waking up, okay? Um, in the morning... What do we do? We wake up and we kind of stretch, right? We go, ah, oh. right. So let's move our hands around. Okay, what's happening? 
So anybody that studies science is going to tell you there's fluid moving through your body. Okay? And what did you do? You just circulated that. You helped circulation of the fluids that are in your body move. Okay? Once that movement started, you just felt a, a layer of energy that you didn't think you had. Okay? That energy came from where? It was already there. You just moved it. Okay? There's potential energy and kinetic energy. Potential energy is just sitting there, waiting to be used. But if we don't use it, what happens? We're born, we live, we're going to die. Done. Okay? Seven day life cycle. What you do during that seven days is what really counts. The fact that I moved, I just felt that energy. Did you guys feel it? Did you feel it? You felt it? Okay. Did you do anything really strenuous? No, all you did was lift your hands up. So action doesn't have to be a big complicated thing. Just taking a step, taking your knee up. Okay? Doing any action is an action forward. Even if you fall, okay, there's a saying, you know what, if you fall, aim forward. Fall forward. Because when you get up, you just took a step forward. So even in the fall, you moved over. Okay? You moved forward. So move forward even in the fall. Why? What does that mean? Learn from the fall. So if I fall, all right, I'm going to fall forward. I'm bracing myself. So I'm protecting myself, right? It automatically happens. And I protect myself. Also, I learned from the fall, you know what? Kids fall all the time. In school, what happens? We're taught, don't make a mistake because you'll fail. Okay? We're graded. We get exams all the time. And we're afraid. We're afraid to fail. So we study a lot. We memorize things. And we're taught to not fail. Okay? If you fail, you go home. Now you get a beating from your parents too. Okay? Then your community. Oh, this guy fails all the time. He's, he's a D student. He's an F student. Okay? But in life, look at life. It's the opposite. It's the other way around. You look at a, a child, a baby. Baby's crawling. Starts to take steps. Just learning to take steps. What happens? One step, falls. What do you think the baby does? Okay. Before the baby gets up, when the baby falls, in the beginning, baby looks at the parents. Baby looks at the one they trust the most. Okay? I know this from experience. I have two kids. I've seen it with both of them. They look at you, and their reaction is going to depend on your reaction. Okay? If I'm afraid, oh my God, you failed, are you okay? The baby cries. Okay? Because I'm afraid that negative energy portrayed right and they reflect on it. Okay? They're reflectors at this point. And what happens? They reflect your attitude and they'll cry. Because they'll, they'll equate. They'll say, okay, fall, bad. And they'll cry. Okay? But if I say, oh, don't worry, just go back up. And I think nothing of it. Baby just gets up, does it again. Until finally baby learns to not just walk but run and then jump. Right? A grass. You cut the grass, you mow the lawn. What if the grass had a thought? You know what? This guy keeps cutting me off every time I try to grow. I give up. I'm not going to grow anymore. No, nature doesn't work that way. Okay? Life energy doesn't stop. Why do we stop? Why from childhood we just continue running until we learn how to walk and run and jump? And when we become adults, we become fearful. Oh, I don't want to fall. Falling means I get hurt. I get hurt, I'm in pain. I don't want pain. And so, I get into fear. And a lot of cultural activities and events that happen, happen based on fear. If I can make you afraid, I can make you do something because you're afraid of losing something. But rather, if I encourage you to do something, and I energize you, I motivate you to do it yourself. I don't have to force you to do anything. You do it because you want to do it. You're going to do it because you want to, because it's your own drive. It's your own decision. It's not based on fear or force. There's the difference. Okay? So in your own life, in your, as a leader, act. Whatever you learn, put it to action. If you're wrong, you learn from it. What difference did it make? You fail, you get back up. You got hurt. Pain is temporary. Are you in pain now? Okay? You might be, but it's temporary. You didn't have it before, you might have it now, and it's gone. 
Deepak Chopra gave a good example. Okay, do um, you guys know Deepak Chopra? Yeah. Have you heard of him? Okay, so he gave an example. He said, you know what? We are afraid of clouds, storms, thunder, lightning, right? Clouds in the sky pass by. You are not the cloud. Don't identify and hold yourself to the cloud. Storms will come, pass by. Okay, what happens? You're going to get a sunny day again. Nice fluffy clouds, white fluffy clouds. And then again, you might have some storm come by. Rain, lightning, okay? Big, big storms. And then they pass by. So who are you? You're this guy. You're the observer. Be an observer of yourself. Be an observer of your own life. Okay? You're going to have obstacles. You're going to have problems that come your way. See those as the clouds that come and go. When you're meditating, when you're trying to focus. Okay? Um, there was a great saint. He said, you know something? When you don't have a goal, when you have no goals at all, then everything is pleasant, happy, do go lucky. Right? Somebody says, hey, let's go out for a movie. All right, let's go. Somebody says, let's go party over there. All right, let's go. Right? Somebody says, you know what? Um, let's just uh, play a game at home. All right. Whatever somebody says, you're ready to do. You have no goals. The moment you have a goal in mind to say, today, I'm going to fill in the blank. Okay? The moment you do that, if you say, you know what? I'm going to just close my eyes for five minutes and just sit. You're going to have obstacles. It's just the law of nature. Right? You set a goal. Now, the same very people that you were ready to do anything with, they're now your obstacles. The one that said, let's go watch a movie. No. I can't. Okay? The one that said, let's go play a game. No, I can't. That's an obstacle because it's taking me away from what I decided I want to do in the next five minutes. Once I put a goal, obstacles are automatically going to be there. The very same life you're living has not changed. What's changed? You changed. The moment you decide to change, obstacles will be there. And that's an acceptance that we need to first get to. To say, you know what? Anytime I say I want to do something different, or I want to do something compared to nothing, obstacles will be there. How do I handle that? Okay, can I go to the movie after five minutes? Sure. But during this five minutes, I need to stay focused. And so the bell just rang, we're about to end our session. So, but, you know, so this is where we should start reanalyzing our own life, our own thinking, our own way of understanding. So it's not just about, it's not just about what I want to do, but it's about how I want to do it. It's not just about where I want to go, it's about why I want to get there, right? So reanalyze ourselves, re-understand, and now make a decision. The decision you make will be the elephant step forward. Thank you.